Table Talk, where we discuss topics that you guys send in using the hashtag Table Talk. I'm Meg Turney. I'm Elliot Morgan. I'm Trisha Hershberger. What was this? Were you reading? I thought he was this? catching no, things. No, I like so to imagine that it's a big studio audience and that everybody's like, Oh, do the pageant wave. Thank you. Hi. Good to see you. Hello. 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 Awesome. Okay. Here we go. All right. Oh, diving right in. Okay. Yep. Okay. At Peter Gruhikik says. Love that name. I, I'm sorry. I can't pronounce your last name, sir. Uh, do you think that someone from a small third world country could succeed in YouTube or in movie making? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Totally. Mm-hmm. I think they have like a fresh new perspective that uh, Ooh, we don't really true. get. Here. Yeah, I think that uh, should happen. We need, uh, for one, also we're Phil and I were just talking about this. We th- there's a perception in Western culture that like everything in third world countries are is horrible, but they <laughs> have like luxury and they have pet peeves and they have like stress that like everyday stress that happens to them. I think we imagine that they're all getting chased by tigers. Uh, um, and they're not. Yeah, so you're talking about like hashtag first world problems. That whole that thing, they yeah. They could also we be about. hashtag third world problems. Yeah. yeah. No, but I, I don't know. Having six siblings from a third world country, uh, there are kids who are worried about clean water. But, you for know, sure. on the, the flip side of that, they, you know, sometimes they do have cell phones and things like that. Yeah. Too. You're right. So right. for the few that do have cell phones, um, the be few. on YouTube, please. I'm I interested. Like that was the most inadvertently oh, judgmental statement. Oh, well, for anyone I, there who are has so them few... anywhere. I'm not on... trying to be judging. I was on Apple, my little Apple TV the other day, which, by the way, uh, not a sponsor. Great purchase. Uh, I was going through my subscriptions, and I was like, looking at all of these things that I'd subscribed to, and I was like, I don't watch any of these besides, like, three channels. But if there was somebody from third world country that decided to make a YouTube channel, oh, heck yes. I was just yeah. like, hey, Maybe my right daily vlog, vlog, like, this is a day in the life, I would watch that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, have, like, my siblings from Cambodia, I bet they would love to see, like, what kids who are growing up in Cambodia, like, what that's really like. Because yeah. they didn't, you know, they didn't get to experience that. Already. Okay. Okay. Let's do something controversial. Let's do something fun. Oh! Fun's good, At my cook 994 says, how would you go about taking over the world? Ooh. Control me, the means of production. On. I would I hire like, Pinky and the Brain and uh, have they them. They failed every time. They failed <laughs> every Yeah, it was Their a horrible track idea. Was horrible. But it was, it was a great way to do it. A great no, means it was getting it there. Was a terrible way Enjoy to do the it. ride. I guess you, you <laughs> have never to. never enjoyed the ride. Politically speaking, if you want to 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 you be the ruler of the world, you have to be politically like uh, you have to rise up in the ranks politically. And in order to do that, you have to sort of tap into whatever the uh, sentiment of the population is, and then use that to your advantage. But then feign uh, a desire for progress. So I think I would never be able to. No. Yeah. Again, control the means of production. You have to be a lot more shrewd. I'm not very shrewd. Mm. You have to be evil, very Machiavellian. I think you have to be house Okay, let's not throw around words that don't mean anything. Yeah, you, you can't just make up words. Okay, here we go. Uh, my turn. And, oh, uh, what do you guys... Uh, at, at Michelle Steph 95 says, What do you guys think about hypnotists? hypnotists? Hashtag table talk. I don't freaking know. Where do I put these? You just throw it. Here. Oh, cool. Um, so, I've seen hypnotists on, like, cruise ships and stuff. That's... <laughs> Cruise ship hypnotists are the best. That's the top level. Yeah, first world problems. This wasn't good on this carnival cruise ship. Um, And we got stranded and starved to death for three days. But I don't know. Starved to death for three days. Yeah, I think there's like group thinking stuff that happens with hypnotism. Oh, for sure. Power of suggestion and all that. But I've seen some weird stuff. I don't don't know. know. That's the thing with like, I think when people's minds are more open to it, like they want to be hypnotized, that kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know, the mind's a very powerful thing. It can make me think I'm dying when I'm having a panic attack, so I bet it can make me think I was Yeah, the mind is messed up. But like they, like you just said, Meg, they say that you have to be open to it in order to be hypnotized. Like, I don't know that I could ever be hypnotized because I feel like the entire time I'd be going, I bet it's not gonna work. I bet it's not gonna work. Yeah. It's probably not gonna work. You, it's you like thinking yourself out of, if you've ever taken some sort of illicit substance, I don't know, thinking yourself out of your high, you know what I mean? Like, There's this like, uh, this illusionist slash mentalist guy from the UK, and I forget his name, I'm sure some of you guys know his name but he's like he does this thing called like faith versus mind or something like that and he uses like the he is a mentalist and watching these like mentalists on tv i don't know anything about hypnotists but if you ever see like a mentalist they're freaking crazy i It'll thought be that like, was a show on like nbc is that a thing people maybe are? they picked what what mentalist oh yeah yeah like what? it's like Same. being a uh Magician, but you're not a magician. You just study mind. like these little like micro expressions or whatever. Yeah, um, I, I like, actually there used to be a, a magic trick where I remember when they do like the World Series of Magic or whatever. It was like the world's that. best magic. Yeah. They would they would show like ten or like twelve pictures on the screen. They'd be like pick any picture, and then they'd be like okay go down one, and then go and they would that pick your yeah, picture. That's like the pattern. Those things. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah. not a mentalist. I actually know a few mentalists uh, for my oh, uh, friend do. circle at the Magic Castle. Are they evil? Are they evil? Now's, uh, Actually, out of the out of the ones that I know, I would say about 50-50. I don't 
Okay. I would give the evil card too. Um, now they're all wondering which one it is. Yeah. I know. Mm. This, is, this is the next. <laughs> trick. I love you, friends. Picky, picky. Yeah, about half evil, but no, mentalism is is super cool. Yeah, it's I, really, get, I get super into really it. Really fun. Could you imagine dating like, people out? Could you imagine dating somebody? I would never mentalist? date a mentalist. Nope. I don't want you to know what's is. on my mind. All right, at McGinn one nine four says, "What's your thoughts takes on the Illuminati?" That's a real bunch of bull crap. Real bull crap. So we've got a real, we've got a bull crap. I think it's Tell bull us why. Crap. Oh, I, I just like to believe that you just always want to believe that there's some higher crazy creepy authority because it makes the world seem like it's going some way that you know has like sense. Uh, you know what I mean? Like the people are planning I, I the totally shit agree. that goes crazy. I would say, hmm. but I'm gonna piggyback on that and do the counter, which is people want to believe in it, right. uh, which makes it fun to believe in. Right. I totally like. I'm all, like, I'll Google the crap out of Jay Z. Uh, I yeah. Don't know. <laughs> He might, he might not be Illuminati, but he's got some dark stuff going oh, on. Oh, Gaga? For sure. She puts all sorts of Illuminati references in her videos, and there's a person who well, breaks them like, all down, and I don't know. I don't know. Like, okay, uh. I've been in L.A. for, like, two and a half years, and I'm not saying I've seen things, but, like, you hear these stories about people who randomly, like, everything just oddly works out for yeah. them. And I've heard, like, rumors where there is, like, there are people, uh, and I've also heard it said that there's, like, 50 powerful people in Hollywood that, like, control everything. And I'm not saying it's Illuminati, but... Uh, I do believe that there are small groups of incredibly powerful people in all walks of life sure. that can mm -hmm. sort of pull different strings. And can pull influence and stuff that. for each other. Yeah, I mean, I've always been fascinated by the whole Illuminati stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely a plausible theory as to why certain things throughout history or certain things happen now. Um, I don't know if I... I mean, I don't have any facts one way or the other to believe it or not believe it or to disprove it. Um, but I, I'm open to it. And it's I also, entertaining. And I think that people yeah. are going to go bonkers uh, against me in the comments for saying this. But what does everyone feel about the idea of the Freemasons being Illuminati? Here's what I know. Uh, Assassin's Creed was a fun game. Totes. And, uh, I, I agree. And Bioshock and, <laughs> 7 was really good. <laughs> And ta and I want to believe that there's a, a big Illuminati theory out there that Taylor Swift being interrupted by Kanye was part of her <laughs> Illuminati. <laughs> Not kidding. This is Google it. Was part of her like induction into the Google, to, into the Illuminati. And that Beyonce was wearing like a red dress, or, or Taylor was wearing a red dress at the time, and that signals that she's ready for the Illuminati. I don't know. It's a thing. And I want to believe that they are there are powerful people in this world who care about Taylor Swift's career. That sounds to me like deductive <laughs> awesome. reasoning. Awesome. Um, at number one, Milo's fan, Milo's fan, says, mm. social media's effect on human contact in less than 140 characters. Ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> the effect awesome. on social media. I feel like I'm connected to everybody right now, and I feel like I want to throw away all of my electronics sometimes and go out and stare at a river, even if it's the LA River, which is totally dried up and it's just a cement, like, ditch, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Free so, race cars in high school. Yeah. Or pinks. I, I don't know. I feel like uh, I feel like social media has made me more connected. I mean, I yeah. guess that's the point, but you know, it's a different kind of connection. I feel like more people than ever are connected. Like for me, when I'm feeling super, like when I go to my grandparents' house, there's no cell phone connection. There is no internet. They're Pennsylvania Dutch, so there's not there's not a heaven. lot of stuff there. But I don't think it's heaven because like two hours in, I'm like, Ugh! like I start having oh, tech really? withdrawal and I start freaking out and I want to be tweeting and what if something happened on my email and I just don't know because I can't get to it and I honestly freak the F out. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I start to feel really lonely and I think that's why I freak out because I'm used to being socially connected mm -hmm. all the time. But when I'm not, then it forces me like going through that, oh my God, I'm freaking out. It forces me to like, sit down, you know, maybe with my grandparents since I'm at their house yeah. and actually spend Have a time with people. Yeah. So I, I think in a lot of ways social media is good to put that um, connection there between people that wouldn't otherwise have been connected, but I do think it's a not a false type of connection, it's just different. I would, we did a story on how like people tweeting back to you like trigger something in your brain that's like a pleasure sensor when you mm. feel like you're connected to people a, a long time ago. But uh, but yeah, I feel like I'm more connected to like, I get to connect with so many people I never would have gotten the chance to speak mm. to or connect with. Um, I think even like the word connection is almost kind of like a remnant from like the pre previous generation because being connected now is so totally mm -hmm, different. Like mm -hmm. it used to be the connected means you're here, you're separated and connection is like this this bridge or whatever but now it's like connection is just ingrained in us like right. who we are is so much defined by like constantly being 
tweeted at or tweeting right. others and stuff. It's kind of like, it's weird. It's changing very quickly. Um, I guess that's why they call us the Generation C, the, the Generation Connection or Generation oh, Connected. Is that? I didn't connected, know always Generation uh, something. Community and, and whatever. Generation but, yeah. Crystal Pepsi, right? Crystal meth, right? <laughs> nope. Hashtag Crystal Pepsi. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. But like I would go, uh, like last year I went on a week-long vacation to Mexico and no cell phone. I, I had internet, but I didn't really use it. And it was so nice. Was, yeah. I read Game of Thrones. Once like, you get it past like, it, it's amazing. Ooh. You're like, this is life. It takes, yeah. it takes me 48 hours to get past the pain. The withdrawal. Take an Ativan, Your girl. withdrawal Take period is intense. You just have a mental addiction to your phone. Okie dokie. Um, at Riley Lee Begins says, What do you think of the friend zone, good or bad? Hashtag table talk. Friend zone's a stupid term. Uh, uh, if you're friends with somebody, good. Be friends with them. Like, don't make it a thing where it's like a, a this like. Or it's like a derogatory. Or yeah. step by friend step. Zone. That's bullcrap. No. Okay, I was friends. Friend uh, zone. With, with All these my, yay! People. I was friends with my <laughs> wife for for years, and we didn't sit around going like, oh, it's, this is just step one, and I'm at step one. No, if you're friends with somebody, that's wonderful, and you should cherish that because they're your friend, yo. That's a step in the right direction. I, I, I hope that quote never gets quoted by me. That's the <laughs> stupidest, but most passionately given quote I've ever done. And they're your friend, done. yo. That's your friend, yo. Or to your mother. What? I'm sorry. I, I, I uh, railroaded that. What no, no, that was hilarious. Um, no, I was just going to say that I've personally had a lot of relationships that started out as friends, and I think that that's a good way to do it, because then you know what you're getting into. No, I agree. I think it's it's a good way to do it, but I very rarely have done that. I'm usually the person who meets somebody and is like, ah, I want to be with you. And then the, the sad part is like when the relationship ends, you're like, I don't know how to relate to you anymore when we're not in a relationship. Right, right. 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 You Can't build be. it on that. When right. the foundation is romance, then it gets kind of hard to... To mm -hmm. make it like... And it's weird yeah. because you become like best friends when you're in that relationship together, and so it's it's, it's even. I feel like it's even more painful when you break up because it's like you're losing that friend that you don't know how to relate to anymore, right. and the the person you're dating. So. I think there's like this kind of misnomer in life where you like you go through things, and every relationship that you have with the opposite sex has to be sort of this step by step thing toward ultimately finding your soulmate. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that has to be the case. Like you can have friends everywhere, and you can have acquaintances, and you can have romantic relationships um, one at a time, and uh, <laughs> eventually. I was say how many romantic relationships do you have? I, I keep an average of. <laughs> Seven at one time. It's very complicated. Okay. Uh, we're like Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith, which is a whole other conversation. I wish I was thinking about it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's crazy. I no. They were monogamous. No, they totally have it. Oh, no, no. no. She's Jada Pinkett Smith. Gay, girl. She, both she of them. Gay. She, they like asked him directly, and Jada Pinkett Smith was like, he's his own man. He can do whatever he wants. Yeah, I'm not going to tell him what he can and can't do. It's crazy. You guys are blowing my mind it right now. It's very recent. I was going to, uh, spoiler alert, I was going to talk about it. Maybe I won't now. I've talked about her. Um, other but, her, her, anyway, other been doing talk about a her. I just think it, I just think you miss out on a lot of uh, what life is if you go through it with one single goal of finding one single person to spend the rest of your life with because life yeah. is very dynamic. No, I think if you uh, I get, uh, to piggyback on that, I think uh, if you try to define every relationship and every person you meet by like, can I be with this person? No, move on. Or like, can mm -hmm. I be with this person? Yes, do they want to be with me right now? No, move on. Like, you're gonna miss out on a lot yep. that that you could really benefit from. Hundred percent agree. And that's table talk. So, uh, <laughs> hey guys, what do you think about the friend zone? Let us know in the comments down below. We're keeping you in the friend zone right now. It's just, camera. I don't want to destroy the friendship we I feel like yeah. we're on like Soft the Coast 103.5 right now. Soft, oh my I gosh, I stumbled is. on one of those radio stations. <laughs> I was dying laughing to myself. It was the best decision I've ever made. Those was, radio stations are like, Nicole writes in, she really misses you, John. Oh, it was, no, it was his mom with the, her kid's birthday. The kid was two. She's like, I just want to miss my, wish my son a happy birthday. He's two. He's not listening to the <laughs> stupid radio station. No, he was station. like, hey, mom, okay. thank you so much for the shout out and doing Okay, so, yeah. so in a, the coast way, let's let's sign this out. Oh, okay. Hey, I'm Meg Tarney. All right, guys, I'm Ellie Morgan, and as always, and I'm stay Trisha. true to yourself. <laughs> and I'm Trisha Hirschberger, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. You can even click this annotation or go to sourcefed.com for all of our daily news and bloggy stuff. I feel like we're trapped in prison. And we're whispering a way to get out. But it's so sweet. Meg would, uh, Meg would like to send a shout out to uh, the other two hosts for making her do this stupid talkie voice. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs>